part in our ministry there and what a blessing it was to represent each and every one of you uh, there. But I uh, want to bring a few thoughts this morning and when I got the flyer about the camp meeting, I thought about this and I really loved the passage uh, that he brought out. Thank you, brother, uh, there. And uh, so turn with me this morning into the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. And uh, I you know, just look around this auditorium and I see uh, there's no telling there. I guess there's probably centuries of ministry experience here. And I'm, I'm uh, thankful for each and every one of you. And uh, get to labor close to some of them. Amen. And uh, it's good to have a good uh, f- uh, fellow brethren uh, that close to us too. But uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. And uh, we'll read the first five verses here. He says, And I, brethren, uh, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not uh, with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Uh, that uh, your faith uh, should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I tell you, I've been saved uh, not as long as some, but long, longer, longer than some, and uh, just celebrated in June my 13th spirit or 30th rather uh, spiritual birthday. I was saved on June the 13th, and uh, but it was my 30th spiritual birthday. And uh, I'll tell you what a joy it's been, amen, to be a child of God for 30 years. And uh, I I thought about, you know, what do you preach, amen? I can see where uh, this brother with the prison ministry, I can see, you know, why a prisoner would want to hear that, brother. I really do. And uh, I I hear these other men of God preach, and uh, Brother Jeremy uh, he's not as old as I am, but he's been preaching longer than I've been. And, uh, but I, I, you know, and I, I marvel at uh, different deliveries God's gave, uh, given men. And, uh, but just be yourself. Amen. Uh, be yourself. Amen. Uh, there's nobody that likes to be me more than me. Amen. And uh, I'm serious, you know. And we can't be somebody else. And God's created us in a unique fashion. And God's put us in places of, of unique uh, capacities. And what a joy. But I thought about, you know, uh, the preaching of the cross, Brother Brian. I, I thought about, you know, whether you're preaching at your church or whether you're preaching at a college campus or whether you're preaching at an a, a auditorium full of pastors and preachers and missionaries. Man, you ain't going to go wrong with preaching the cross. Amen. You ain't going to go wrong with preaching the cross. Amen. Um, I rest my case at the cross. Uh, number one, because of salvation's plan. Turn with me back into the book of Genesis and chapter number three. Uh, Genesis and chapter number three. Uh, of course, I don't have to say this, but there's a, a first mention here. And uh, in this passage of scripture, uh, as the first uh, sign of a promised redeemer. And uh, Genesis and chapter number three, but there's, I, I love, I told the church the other day, I love the book of Genesis. I'll tell you, it is so rich and so uh, full. And what a joy it is to read it and study it and meditate in it. But uh, Genesis chapter number 3 and beginning at uh, verse number 6, if you will, uh, for the sake of time. And when the preacher says for the sake of time, he's lying out of his teeth. Amen. Y'all know that. But uh, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was des- uh, pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, uh, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew uh, that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves uh, together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord uh, God walking in the cool of the garden of the day. 
Now, this wasn't the first time that uh, God came down in the cool of the day uh, to fellowship with man. Uh, God, but let me say this time, as he is an all-knowing God and he is all-present, he knows everything. Uh, he knew that Adam, he knew that Eve had took uh, of, of, of that forbidden fruit. And let me say, he didn't come down to fellowship, so to say. He came down to redeem. And uh, we can find that here. And, and in, in a moment, you'll notice uh, when God asked Adam and Eve questions. And again, God knows everything. He knows the answers to these questions. But when he asked man uh, these questions, when he asked mankind these questions, uh, he's wanting uh, uh, man to think like God is thinking. And let me say, let's just continue on. And uh, he heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves uh, from the presence of the Lord. Let me say this, when sin is present with man, you're always wanting to hide from the presence of God. I'll tell you, you won't find a better place uh, to get rid of your sin than at the foot of the cross. Many years ago as a child in my home church down in South Arkansas, I confess that confession's good for the soul, amen. Sometimes it's just not good for the reputation, amen. But in the backdrop of the podium, uh, there was a stained glass cross. And we were kids out, outside after service waiting on our parents to talk. You know, you know I, and I'm, not, I'm one of those now, amen. But I uh, like to stand around and talk after church. But we were just walking around, playing around. But right at the foot of the cross, Brother Brian, there was a little note wrapped up like this here and uh, we took it uh, to our pastor pastor we found this outside and he opened it up and it was a package of cigarettes and a lighter and a note wrapped to that thing and they laid it at the foot of the cross brother and got deliverance from a sin verse number nine the Bible says, and the Lord God called unto Adam and said, Where art thou? Adam knew he was guilty in that courtroom, brother. He knew he was guilty. He said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? And hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, uh, The woman. Uh, uh, whom thou hast uh, gavest me to be with me. Uh, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord asked the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou, hast cursed above, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every, creep, or every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between uh, thy, uh, thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Amen. Thank God for that promise right there in that uh, passage of scripture there. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth thy children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee. And unto, unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of, the, of thy wife, as, and hast eaten of thy tree, which thou commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Uh, in sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth unto thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread. Till, the, uh, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. Uh, for dust thou art, and dust thou shalt return. And Adam called his first, uh, his first, it better be, his, first, his, <laughs> his, his wife's uh, name Eve, for she was the mother of all living. And unto Adam also and his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins. Amen. I think that was a lamb. Amen. The Bible says, the Bible says in the Revelation, uh, chapter 13, the Lamb slain 
from the foundation of the world. Amen. Uh, that's my opinion, and uh, I, I'm, I like it. Amen. But uh, verse, he clothed them with those skins. Verse 22, and the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now let us put forth his hand to, make, to take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Man, you're talking about some great mercy that was extended. I'll tell you, he took away that tree. Amen. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. And so he drove out the man and placed in the east a Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep away the tr uh, to keep the way of the tree of life. Because of salvation's plan, I rest my case at the cross. Again, God came down in the cool of the day because he knew mankind had sinned. He knew mankind had broken the law and the commandment of God. He knew uh, that mankind was now in a state of condemnation. He knew that they had tried to uh, work uh, themselves back into fellowship with clothing themselves with those fig leaves. And let me say this today, standing there in all that uh, condemnation, standing there trying to give an account of their sin toward God, uh, that they were casting the blame. Adam was casting the blame to his wife, uh, Eve, was casting the blame to the serpent. But uh, let me say this, uh, Jesus, uh, he uh, cursed the serpent, obviously, but at the same time, I'm thankful for the covering of those skins, amen, as God would cover them and God would address their problem of nakedness. God would address their problem. And uh, yes, he would drive them out of the garden. Yes, he would command them to work by the sweat of the face. Yes, he would do these things. He would curse the ground for their sake, but Thank God for verse 15 where he would promise them a redeemer. Thank God that he would send one uh, thousands of years later uh, to lay his life down upon a cross. Uh, and again, those Roman soldiers didn't lay him down. Those Roman soldiers didn't have to force him down. He laid his life down there on the cross for our sins. And thank God uh, this morning uh, for the uh, uh, sacrificial uh, lamb that laid his life down. And let me say this this morning, at the right in the middle of all that sin, that condemnation, I'll tell you, God gave a promised redeemer. Let me say this this morning as well. Salvation's more than a plan. It was a man, amen. And that was the man Christ Jesus. And let me just say this in uh, finishing up here. But uh, not only is uh, the because of salvation's plan, I rest my case at the cross uh, because of salvation's plan, but also because of the Savior's plea. And, and uh, it was recorded by prophecy in Isaiah chapter 45 and verse number 22. Look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else beside me. I'll tell you, I'm glad we serve a God that gives us the opportunity to look unto Him and be, be you saved all the ends of the earth. We had uh, Alaska. When you think of Alaska, you think of pride and self-sufficiency. But that's everywhere you go, folks. That's everywhere you go. And uh, I got to thinking about this, Brother, Ch uh, Brother Chisholm. Uh, we had a couple of churches come see us and uh, help us do some vacation Bible schools. And, and uh, we were able to take the Word of God uh, to at least two different people and show them how God could save their soul. One of them was a little girl that was already attending our church. And the other one was a, a little guy, I don't know, probably seven, eight years old and uh, a Mormon child. They let their kid come to our vacation Bible school. What'd you do to them? Amen. I preached the truth to them. Amen. Amen. And I was able to take the scriptures and I heard that little guy. I heard that little guy take those words and ask God to save him. I asked him, you know, do you know that something's different now? And he shook his little head. Yeah. Man, my heart broke because I knew what he had to go home to. I knew that he had to go home to different training and different teaching. But I'm praying for that young man that one of these days God get a hold of that truth that was instilled in him a few years ago that God had raised him up and show him a truth, amen, from the Word of God. Because of the Savior's plea, come on, look unto me and be ye saved. Matthew chapter number 11 and verse number 28, not only look unto me, the Bible gives the invitation to come unto me, all ye that are labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. 
Man, that was sweet uh, words to my heart. Amen. A little over 30 years ago when I was at the, t at the Greer Baptist camp meeting. Amen. Brother Gary, don't take for granted. You can't meet him, brother. I'll tell you, God saves souls at camp meeting. God uses these things uh, to sow seeds of the Word of God. I was still living in South Arkansas. My family to, came up to see my older brother and uh, that was already living in South Carolina. And God got a hold of my heart uh, that evening. And those folks started rejoicing in the Lord. Those folks started rejoicing in something that I knew I didn't have. And I went back and for several months uh, before uh, I got saved, uh, several months, I'd lay in condemnation. I'd lay wondering under the uh, conviction, uh, convicting power of the Spirit of God. I'd wonder if I'd be, uh, it wake my eyes in a, in a place called hell if, I'd, if something was to happen to me. But uh, several months later, I was able to attend a youth meeting. God got a hold of my heart again and showed me. And I, uh, that night, I was at the foot of the cross. That night, y'all were probably there, I guess, June the 13th of 1992. I got saved by the grace of God. I'll tell you, that it was that day that I came unto him. And my labors, the, my labors of trying to please my parents, my labors of trying to please my pastor, my labors of trying to uh, live a different life, at church than I was during the week. Man, they were weighing on me. But I'll tell you what, I was able to cast those on him because I knew, I knew he cared for me. Amen. And uh, I'll tell you, not only we, can we look unto him, man, we can come unto him. Luke chapter 23 and verses 33 and 34, it says, When they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and one on the left. And then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I mean, we're talking about, I rest my case at the cross because of the Savior's plea. Thank God there's forgiveness at the cross. Thank God, amen, there's redemption at the cross. Thank God, not only is there salvation's plan uh, at the foot of the cross, not only is there the, uh, the Savior's plea from the cross, there's sin's payment from the cross. Romans chapter 5 and uh, verse number 8, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. I was preaching again there, just getting started, man, just in a brand uh, a new church front, a storefront building there. And uh, we had one guy that was coming, and man, I'd preach to him and my family, and uh, he'd ask questions. And the more I talked to him, uh, the more I talked to him, I, I could figure out this guy's some kind of a transient. He'd, he'd be here. He probably wouldn't be here long. Uh, la uh, li how many has ever lived in a rainforest? All right, we get storms in the south, thunderstorms. That's not rain, folks. Amen. If you live in a rainforest, just, just fall under a bucket of water somewhere and uh, let it blow sideways. Our, our thunderstorms comes down this way. Cordova, it comes down this way, and it lasts for days and weeks. Amen. And uh, if you ever lived in a place that's classified as a rainforest, you can understand what I'm talking about. I come back, Brother Brian, and I told the church I'd never take the sunshine for granted again. Amen. <laughs> But for sin's payment, you know, that man, he told me that uh, the preaching of the cross was boring. And I, I just couldn't believe what I heard. My jaw dropped right there in that little storefront building. And, and uh, I'll tell you, it, it thrills my heart when I hear another man preach on the cross of Calvary. It thrills my heart uh, to come across scripture uh, that talks about Jesus. Of paying my price. It, it, it thrills my heart to know that I've been forgiven uh, uh, from sin uh, when you go to the foot of the cross. God demonstrated his love, commendeth his love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, not after we've been saved 30 years, no, not after we've memorized scriptures in Sunday school, not after we sing songs like Amazing Grace, no, it's while we were yet sinners. I'll tell you, let us not forget, uh, church, let us not forget, men, pastors, evangelists, uh, missionaries, who we were. 
Amen. Don't live in the past, but it don't help us to visit there from time to time. I'll tell you again, uh, 1 John 2 and verse 1 and 2 says, My little children, these things write I unto you uh, that you sin not. Man, what a tall order. But the Bible says, if any man sin, we have an advocate. He's already written these scriptures. A uh, go-between, amen, an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, amen, one that's able to bridge the gap between sinful man and a holy God. What a joy it is to rest in these facts. What a joy it is to know that we have an advocate with the Father. I'll tell you, there's none of us toting around halos, amen. There's none of us uh, that can say, I've lived a perfect life even yet this morning. Uh, I'll tell you, we uh, have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins and not for our sins only but for the sins of the whole world. Amen. Brother preached the cross in Paraguay. Amen. Brother preached the cross in North Carolina. Brother preached the cross in Tennessee. Preached the cross wherever you're from. Amen. Amen. And uh, I'll tell you, you're not going to go wrong by preaching the cross. I'll tell you, location may uh, play a difference in where God wants you, but I'll tell you, the message should never change. I'll tell you, Jesus said, where I've lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Amen. I'll tell you, I don't, it don't embarrass me to preach the cross. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13 says, But now in Christ Jesus, who uh, uh, were set, uh, sometimes were afar off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Amen. I like that word, nigh, brother. I like that word, nigh. I'll tell you, when you come to the cross, I'll tell you, you'll see a, a, a thorn-pierced brow. You'll see a nail-pierced hand and feet. You'll see a spear in a side uh, that forthwith came blood and water. You'll see these things, but I'll tell you, it's that blood, amen, that made, a, that made us nigh by the blood of Christ, amen. And uh, let me just say this today, this morning. If you're here and you're a sinner and don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as a Savior, I'll tell you, there's no better uh, words that you'll hear than to come unto me. There's no better words to hear uh, than to say, draw nigh unto me. I'll tell you, for a child of God, uh, if you're here this morning, uh, Romans chapter 13 and verse number 11 says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Amen. Let me just say this for a child of God that's here this morning. Uh, you know that our sins are forgiven. There's no better thing to rest in the fact of that today. But there's no better thing to rest in the fact that our hope is coming. Amen. Our hope is here. I'll tell you tonight, uh, today, uh, now is our salvation nearer than we, we believed. I've been saved for 30 years, but I've been in church all my life. And for all my life, I've heard men of God uh, herald the uh, words from the pulpits uh, that, uh, you know, look for Jesus. Look for Jesus. He's coming. He's coming. But let me say this today, uh, 30 years later, after being saved by the grace of God, yeah, some may mock and some may scoff at the uh, coming of our Lord. But let me just say, we're 30 years closer than we was uh, those many years ago. We're closer today than we were yesterday. Let me say this today, that cross is still being attacked today. But that cross is still being uh, disregarded today. That cross is maybe being ignored today. But let me just say this. And I'm not going to sing it. Don't have to worry about that today, folks. I'm envious of preachers that can sing, amen, and, uh, and can preach too, amen. But uh, the cross, it standeth fast. Hallelujah. <laughs> Defying every blast. Hallelujah. The world its hate hath shown, yet it is not overthrown. Hallelujah for the cross. It is the old cross still. Hallelujah. Its triumph let us tell. Hallelujah. The grace of God here shown. Amen. Let me move to the next page. Through Christ, the blessed Son, who did for sin atone. Hallelujah for the cross. Twas here the debt was paid. Hallelujah. Our sins on Jesus laid, hallelujah. So round the cross we see of Christ our offering, of Christ our living King, hallelujah for the cross. Men, we ought to herald these today. Don't be ashamed of the cross. Don't be ashamed of the life and the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. You won't find a better love, amen. Thank you, brother.